up, hold up, there's a car. Oh, it's so bubbly. And now, uh, dude, there's a car coming. Are you this stupid car? I told you to move. Oh, <laughs> it all leaked. It leaked. It's leaking. We gotta fill it back up. Besides the field goal percentage number that pops out at you for Western Kentucky on the game. The other big number, BC just 4 of 16 from beyond the three-point line. Their inability to score it from beyond the three-point line. Big part of what Western Kentucky has done defensively tonight. And those two free throws gave Hollingsworth the single-season freshman scoring mark here at Western Kentucky. He's got 16 points in the game. Chapman for three. Online but too short. Colby the board. We're down to 90 seconds to play. Hollingsworth, a collision in midcourt. That's going to be a blocking foul on Chapman. No, check that. That will be against Jerome Robinson. His third. He is the all-time freshman scoring leader in the history of the Metro-Lee basketball. Making the announcement that Hollingsworth has just set the freshman scoring record and he gets a standing ovation. And when you uh, match anything that Courtney Lee did here for the Hilltoppers, you're going to get quite an ovation. Courtney Lee still playing. He's got New York Knicks. He's got 18 points, Hollingsworth does. And beginning to look more and more as if they're going to have another game, at least one more game to play. And he wasn't the guy out of that touted group recruiting class of the freshman who they thought might set that record. Thought it might have been Anderson, but Anderson was ineligible the first 15 games. Never really got himself completely on track. But Hollingsworth has been there all season long. For Rick Stansberry and Stafford. Dave, when you think about it, they've got so many new players. The only returning player they have is Justin Johnson. And certainly that's a great guy to build around. But the fact that they've been able to mesh all these different guys in right from the start when they played so well in the battle for Atlantis when they hung in there with Villanova had a really good win on a neutral court against Purdue yep. as well as SMU when SMU was playing better. Johnson out, taken out of the game and he gets a standing ovation. It might be his last home game and these fans here in this region are really good knowledgeable basketball fans. And they certainly appreciate everything that uh, Justin Johnson has done. He has led the Hilltoppers in scoring each of the last two years. He's going to do it again. That's going to match another guy's retired jersey that's up there, and that's Jim McDaniel. The late Jim McDaniel. Dwight Colby checks out of the game. Grad transfer from Kansas. And Thompson. And he gets a hug from Stansbury as he heads to the bench. And they barely have enough guys in uniform to be able to get everybody out for a curtain call. They've been undermanned, but they have not underperformed. Going to get their 25th win on the season. By the way, that was Robinson's fourth personal foul to the bucket. And a foul with 59 ticks left. This will go against Jun. Mustafa Jun checks into the game over 12. That's his first personal foul. On the other side for Boston College, they've got to use this as the next step for their program. We talked about the fact they've been so much better at home than on the road. To make that next step, they're going to have to start winning games on the road. And 
One of the big things in the offseason is what's going to happen with Jerome Robinson. Very good chance that he'll put his name into the NBA draft, test the waters. Why not with the type of season that he's had? But may end up being that Je Jerome Robinson needs to come on back for that senior season, continue to get a little bit stronger, continue to refine his game. And if he comes back along with Bowman, BC's got an opportunity to make another big jump. The Robinson in ACC conference games was so tough. Average over 24 points a game. He scored more than four points a game more than the second place finisher in conference action in the ACC. Including 46 on the road at Notre Dame. The highest point total on the road in the history of the ACC conference. Anderson for three. Mitchell the rebound. Inside for 30 seconds to play. Bowman had it rattle out. Shot clock is off. And an impressive win here at home for Western Kentucky. They were excited. The fans in this area were excited. And it showed with their performance. Western Kentucky goes to 25 and 10 with a 77. Oh, check that. Count it 79 62. Well, Bearden with the dunk there. Yep, got the dunk. It's, yeah, it's not what you want to be able to do. They're going through handshake lines. That's where you just got to pull the basketball back out. It's not great sportsmanship right there. BC wasn't guarding them. That's where you just got to let it go. See Rick Spansberry saying, really, do we have to do that? And now it's the final, 79-62. Western Kentucky goes to 25 and 10. They will play the winner of the UNC Asheville Southern Cal game in the second round of the NIT. Boston College ends the season at 19 and 16. So the four seed beats the five in this part of the NIT bracket. You can go ahead and advance Western Kentucky into the second round after a dominant performance here at the Diddle Arena on their home floor over Boston College.